Star Trucker will be coming out next week at the time of this video coming out. So let me take you through everything we know so far about the game. I'll be splitting this video into eight little segments. So if you want to skip ahead or go to a particular point, you can do so with the timestamps in the description. I'm going to start with some general info. It releases on the 3rd of September 2024 and is developed by Monster and Monster, published by Raw Fury. It's a single player space trucker simulator where you haul cargo and trade salvage. And it's going to be releasing on the PC and the Xbox Series S and X, where the PC system requirements are to be announced. Let's move on and talk about the gameplay itself. So you get to cruise the hyper highways, taking on a variety of jobs such as long hauls and hazardous drop-offs. Use the fully voiced interactive CB radio where you can request docking permissions or send out an SOS. You can visit auto shops to upgrade and improve your truck systems, and you don't just get to drive, you can get up and walk around your cab and spacewalk. You can deal with the power cell maintenance in your cab and fixing the exterior of your truck if you come across any collisions that cause any damage. And I mentioned a little bit there about the power cell maintenance. Maintenance. So your truck cab systems use power cells. So you've got two cores, one gravity, one oxygen, and two magnets. And the power cell status will tell you how much is left and its hourly drain via one of the monitors in your cockpit. And if a cell runs out of that particular function, it will stop. So if you run out of a gravity cell, for example, items loose in your cabin will float all around until you fix that cell. The climate control also matters. If you're in a cold environment and you don't adjust your cabin heat settings correctly, you will basically die from hypothermia. There is a selection of original songs covering Starburst Blues, Galactic Rock, and Asteroid Infuse Americana, and you can turn that on and off through the radio in your upper left. You can unlock a wide range of haulage jobs, trailer types, suppliers, and cargo, and you can customize your rig with an extensive collection of parts and paint jobs. You can trade small goods and contraband based on a changing galactic economy. Acceleration and top speed are affected by the combined weight of your hitched trailers, and the heavier the load or loads, the longer it will take to get up to speed. This also means you'll need to account for brake distances, as it'll take a lot longer to bring your truck to a stop when hauling a heavy load. And it also includes a cruise control, which lets you manually adjust the target speed and will disable itself if you accelerate for longer than a second, hit the brakes, or have an unfortunate collision. You can also utilize an emergency brake quickly, which brings your truck to a complete stop by expelling air from the cab. You can also change the FOV in your cab, and you can experience solar storms, electrical storms, and anomalies. And your truck has a weight limit. For example, in the demo, it was a 150 kilogram limit, and this can be increased with skills. Now let's talk about the map and zones. So you can use the galactic map to plan your journey and warp jumps. It's split into four major zones. You'll begin with access to the core systems, and as you help other truckers with side jobs, you'll be granted clearance to the others. Each of these zones unlocks new sectors, corporations, and haulage routes while providing unique environmental challenges. Zones are made up of a varied collection of sectors, and each sector has its own theme and amenities. The map will tell you the temperature, traffic and security for each point of interest depending on where you are, and will also tell you your current objective is, the local prices for certain items and whether they've gone up or down in percentage, as well as not allowed cargo. The points of interest include gas station, job board, trader, paint shop, body shop, upgrade shop, toll booth, way station, security checkpoint and black market. Now for the four zones, you've got the core systems, which I've just previously mentioned, which is a varied collection of bustling sectors providing a hive of activity and trade and have many established trade routes providing a wealth of resources to nearby zones. The downside to the hustle and bustle of these long established sectors is the space junk has become a common problem with debris proving the downfall of many a driver who strays from the road. Then we've got the solar provinces, which are prone to flares and temperature fluctuations making them an ideal location for energy farms and and waste disposal and despite the temperamental climate many businesses thrive here from the steady stream of tourism opportunities provided by the numerous leisure outposts and viewing platforms then we have the mineral colonies which form an area of the galaxy where essential raw resources can be extracted from a variety of asteroids and electrical storms are a commonplace wrecking havoc on unshielded electrical equipment finally we have the enigma territories and these are found at the far side of the galaxy and these fringe sectors encourage business by having a more relaxed look on trade laws and tax while shipping highly sought after materials and being so far out there in constant need of resupply which is made of all the more hazardous due to shimmer stones and these are mostly invisible to the naked eye but with a properly calibrated scanner can be avoided for the most part let's move on to the routes 
So you've got the star routes, which is your standard jumps and your basic jump between sectors, free to use as long as you have clearance and essential for galactic travel. Then you've got the hyper highways, which are toll jumps. These are represented by the double lines and toll routes are great for covering large areas of the galaxy quickly, but require a fee that increases based on the number of trailers you're towing. And then finally, you've got the business routes, which are one way jumps. And due to the enormous cost of maintaining multiple jump gates in the sector, some routes are limited to travel in one direction. Despite this, business loops can be still advantageous to truckers looking to optimize their journey. Let's move on to the jobs themselves. The job boards in Star Trucker will have a constantly changing list of jobs on offer. Which job the player takes will greatly affect their money earning potential. The distance the player needs to haul will affect payout, but also the nature of the cargo. For example, fragile, perishable, heavy, temperature sensitive, etc. And this will be a risk reward calculation for the player. And in some cases, taking an unprofitable job might be sensible if it partially pays you to reach a sector with better paying jobs. You can also get side jobs via radio chatter, and for the most part, radio chatter happens naturally as you complete procedural hauls and unlock certifications. And other truckers in the galaxy will begin to take notice and start offering side jobs. Initially, they help introduce new jobs and cargo types, but as you progress, they try to provide some little twists on mechanics and provide players an opportunity to get to know the NPCs a little better. And these are obviously optional, you don't need Need to take them if you don't want to and when you've selected your job it will tell you the load container type weight and payout it'll also tell you about the route where it's coming from the destination the distance in ls which i think is the game's own unit the estimated time how many jumps and when it's expected by and each job has an expiry when in the job board a bit similar if you've played a truck simulator 2. Let's talk about skills and the skill tree. So the player will earn experience for completing jobs and this can be used to unlock new certifications in the skill tree. Certifications open up new job types like fragile or heavy and unlock a suitable trailer for the cargo. These jobs are generally more difficult, but pay better. On top of those certifications, we'll also apply bonuses to related job types. And you can find a job that is both fragile and long distance, and you'll get a bonus for both categories, meaning clever players can take jobs with multiple difficulty aspects and earn money much more quickly. These skills were as they were in the demo, so may differ to the final release, so just keep that in mind. So the skill tree is split into three, fast and risky on the left, profitable in the center, and safe and sound on the right. Some skills scale up with the 1, 2, and 3 versions, other skills are by themselves. And also in relation to those scalable skills, which are the same but have a sort of increased bonuses, those bonuses are always going to be the same. So the skill 1 will always have a 5% more XP and 10% more cash. Skill 2 will always have 10% more XP and 20% more cash. And skill 3 will have 20% more XP and 25% more cash. So what are those skills? Let's start with the standalone skills. So the cargo clearance, which is higher cab loads granted at weight stations, you get a plus 100 kilogram limit. Trail permissions, you get clearance for jobs with trail permission. So you get plus one trail link and then plus 10% cash and 20% XP for trail permissions. So that's equivalent to actually a skill number two, technically. Now let's go over some of those scalable skills. First of all, you've got perishable loads one, two, and three, which unlocks the jobs with perishable loads and two and three unlocks new of those perishable load job types then we've got the just in time jobs one two and three which unlock jobs with tight deadlines then hazard loads which unlock jobs with the hazardous loads function one two and three then we've got heavy loads as it says on the tin some of these are self-explanatory the jobs with heavy loads one two and three Long distance jobs unlock an increased delivery radius, and you've got one, two, and three with that as well. As well as valuable loads, one, two, and three. Again, it's unlocking the valuable loads type of the cargo. And then we've got the fragile load type, one, two, and three, and the oversight loads, one, two, and three. But there's one more skill, which does technically have a scale, but it's not like the other ones that I mentioned and explained prior. And this is for EVA training. So these are actually, instead of scaled other are one, two, and three, they are scaled in that way but they're not in the same skill tree one is on the left tree one is in the center tree and one is on the right tree depending on which one you choose will determine how much of a boost this actually gives you so the eva training 
that is in the fast and risky tree will give you an increased space walk efficiency, which they all do, but a minus 5% power drain and a minus 10% air consumption. The EVA trading located in the profitable tree, however, gives you a minus 10% power drain and a minus 20% air consumption. And then the one in the safe and sound tree will give you a minus 20% power drain and a minus 25 air consumption. And those are all the skills that we know at this moment of time. So let's move on to the game economy. Balancing this economy will be a challenge in a purely stats based game, but because Star Trek is also a physics simulation with a lot of player agency, both the player driving skill and chosen route will affect your profitability and things can go south very quickly. So if you haven't checked your core power cells during a pre fly then that's going to be a bit of a surprise when they do run out. Or if you're approaching a depot at cruising speed and your truck controls just stop working. A job that was profitable on paper has suddenly cost you thousands in fines and repairs so basically be prepared for anything and everything finally let's talk about customization some paint jobs will be available from the start and there will be liveries that are unlocked via challenges and these challenges provide progression goals and cover a range of activities these activities can range from ranking up and clocking up the miles to focusing on jobs from specific companies once a livery has been unlocked you're free to color your rig however you like and many of the liveries are split into multiple color groups and there are also paint finishes which which can be applied to any livery so there's things like reflective metallic matte etc and that's it that's everything we know so far about star trucker which is coming out on the 3rd of september what are your thoughts on the game are you planning to get it or a little bit later let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this video found it helpful and informative and like to see more content like this one make sure you are subscribed i'll be covering more star trucker on the channel and i also cover racing and simulation games so if that interests you you can stick around and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.